services, but don't want to cover it all in one service just because of the importance of uh, what we'll be preaching. And so uh, I've asked him to sing one song this morning, and then we'll give him to the Lord. All right, go ahead, young. crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. That's your first gospel track right there. Amen. Amen. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself. <laughs> And us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God? Boy, wouldn't it be good to see a, a society that would fear God? Yes. Yes. Dost thou not fear God? Seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. 
And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. You can be seated uh, this morning. Thanks so much for standing. And this morning I want to look here at these verses. Uh, verses that oftentimes are preached, as I made uh, reference to a few moments ago, uh, around Easter. And it seems that, unfortunately, on Mike Brown, throughout the year, Nobody really goes back and touches these verses very often because we, we reserve those for Easter Sunday. And, and, and that's great. That's fantastic. But I'm a firm believer that this here is a topic that needs to be covered a whole lot more than just one or two Sundays yep. out of the year. Right. This is one of the most important topics of the Bible and yes. should be preached above anything yes. else. Mm -hmm. This is the whole basis as to why I am saved Amen. this morning, yeah. because the lovely Lord Jesus was willing to lay his life down on the cross. Amen. 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 As a child of God this morning, I pray that I never get over here hey. about the cross. Mm -hmm. I never get over hearing about Calvary. Hey. I never get over the hill. Amen. Amen. I pray it never becomes just another topic that I feel like I know everything about. I'm sure I could pull many of us here in this congregation this morning as to what happened, what hour, who said this, who said that, what happened there, what in your mind could you picture it? And most of us will have about the same answer because we've got a great working knowledge of what happened there. But here's the problem. When things become, become just so mundane in our mind and just so common in our mind, it shows in our actions. Absolutely. And a lot of times, it, 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 it's why I, I, I'm a firm believer in testifying. Yes. And, and, and why, why would you say that, Pastor? Because it remains fresh. Yes. On the day that God saved you. Yes, right. On the day that He came into your life yeah. and He made you a new creature. Yes. Yeah. See, whenever we don't do that, Brother Matt, it's just that we've just gotten so, well, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, and everything's great. That's why I'm a firm believer in letting others know about what happened in your life. Yes. We talked to our young kids this morning uh, in Sunday school about using your words, using your tongue mm -hmm. for healing, <coughs> using them for uplifting. <coughs> Man, there's nothing more uplifting than whenever somebody comes by and says, let me tell you about when I got saved. Yeah, right. that's right. Hey, man, that's the most uplifting thing. Good. I was talking to another pastor yesterday. Different faith. We're, we're not of like faith. He's still my brother. <laughs> Amen. Right. I, I'm not one of those. Praise the Lord. Yeah. If he's born again, he's still going to heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And we were talking yesterday, and man, it was such sweet fellows. You've never met him before. And we have a mutual, well, uh, one of his congregation is a friend of mine. And uh, we, we were sitting there talking, just such sweet, sweet, sweet fellowship we had on the side of a baseball field. How about that? Yeah. All places, right? We had a great, great time sitting there talking. And why? Because we were talking about our world. Yeah. Right. See, never get over yeah. Calvary. Yeah. Never get over what he did yeah. at Calvary. <clears throat> See, how many times have I said it here, if it wasn't for Calvary, this place wouldn't be full of right. this. Right. Amen. This place, there's not a chance that any of us, maybe a few of us may know one another, mm -hmm. but this congregation, would, we wouldn't know one another. I definitely wouldn't know any of you. Because I'd still be down in North Carolina somewhere, uh, sitting on a bar stool more than likely. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Listen. Never get over the hill. Oh, Never get over the I want to preach a message this morning on things I learned at Cal. This is going to go <coughs> over a couple of messages, maybe three, maybe ten. Who knows where we're going to go with that, right? But I want us to look this morning at some things that I learned in Cal. Some things that we can learn about what happened there on that day. I don't care how many times I hear about Calvary. I want it to always take me back to the day I got Yes, it. sir. Amen. Amen. If you're saved here this morning, I pray this message will remind you of the day that you trusted oh, Christ yes. to be your Savior. Amen. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, you're not born again, you're lost, on your way to hell, I want you 
want you to know something this morning. Jesus loves you. Yes, sir. Amen. He loves you in such a way that he was willing to spread his yes, arms sir. out. Amen. Give up his life. Lay Amen. his life down Amen. so that you could be born. Yes, man. What a Savior. He didn't do it so you'd go to heaven. Don't, don't get mistaken. He did it so you could be forgiven. That's right. Yes. Yes. He did it so you could be forgiven. Thank you. For a few minutes this morning, I want to look at things I learned from Calvary. Things I learned. Yeah. Brother Mike Brown, how about you pray for us for a <clears throat> Lord and Father, we just thank you, Lord. Once again, Father, we can't thank you enough for all that you provide and all you do for us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the message that we're about to hear. And Father, just give him <clears throat> the boldness, give him wisdom, and the things that he has to say. And Father, we just pray for glory and everything. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. There was a time in America, <coughs> not in the too distant past, that the Bible was actually viewed by most Americans as the Word of God. And it was actually viewed that when it was spoken, it was actually viewed as absolute truth. There's always been those that have denied it. Now, there's always been those deniers. You can see them in Scripture. They're the deniers of who Christ was and deniers of, of the Word of God. But it, the vast majority at one time, anyway, would look at the Bible as being absolute uh, truth on every subject on which it spoke, whether it was the subject of morals or whether it was about salvation. America no longer respects the Bible. Right. America right. no longer looks at it as the authoritative word of God. Yes. Satan has been so successful of mm -hmm. getting people in our country and around the world right. to not only doubt but defy and discard the word of God as right. being God's word. We are now relying more on our human wisdom and our selfish yes, desires. Sir. Right. And Satan's done good work in that. Yes, sir. Makes me think of what he did in Genesis chapter 3 when he looked at Eve and said, as God said. Yeah, that's right. Is that really? How many people do we run into today that say, well, man wrote the Bible. God used man as the writing instrument, but it's God's holy word. Yeah. It's God's spoken word that was pinned down. Wow. Amen. You can say, well, do you believe these uh, science books? Man wrote those without any inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you take those to your grave with you, right? Yeah. So we have to understand this morning that the Bible, unfortunately, has been replaced in our country, in many countries, with relativism. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That is the killer of the local church today, is, uh, is how we are leaning as the church in the world is based more on relativism than they are on right. what God said. We're looking more at uh, the knowledge of truth and morality, how it exists in relation to culture, to yes. society, historical context. That's relativism. Relativism. Mm -hmm. We are leaning more on Brother Tom Harmon, what society says. And as long as I don't get too close to them, or however, so long as I don't feel as bad as that next person. Listen, your feelings are going to lead you astray anyway. Yes, sir. It ain't about your feelings anyway. Because I'm going to promise you, I don't wake up every day, Brother Michael Swope, feeling safe. Right. <laughs> Amen. If you're basing your life on feelings, you are in for a long, yes, terrible yes, road, my friend. But what we're doing is we're basing our life on feelings and, and, and our humanistic mentality over what thus saith the Lord. Yeah, yes, right. Sir. And when we do that, mm. we are setting ourselves up for failure. Amen. Probably nothing reveals how the gospel message is being uh, is missing in our pulpits quite as much as relativism has in our society. When we look at Calvary, nothing is more clear than that there there are some absolute truths That's right. in this Bible. Yes. As a matter of fact, everything in this Bible. Is yeah. Absolute yes, sir. Truth. We can get in here. We can talk about moral absolutes and moral relativism. We can get in talking about those different things. We're not going to go in to all that this morning because that's a whole other message, a whole other time. We may get to it before this is over. With. Amen. Amen. But I want us to understand one thing. 
if the Bible says it, it's 100% true. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Now, we can't just say yes, amen. amen. Right. And then hear it be like, no, I'm not good. Amen. Amen. It's good Because trust me, I sat there and said, oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then God said, okay, what about this scripture? Yeah, good preacher. I don't know about all that stuff. Now, I ain't going to do that one. But everything else, everything else is good. Especially that stuff about salvation. Woo -hoo -hoo! We yeah. love the stuff about salvation. Don't worry, it gives us right. Oh, yeah, yes, we get it. shouting. Hallelujah. Oh, salvation. Jesus died on the cross. Everybody says, Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. He died for your old rotten sins. Woo! <laughs> hey, man, you're going to heaven. Yeah! All right, you are to obey the authority. Amen. <laughs> we don't like that stuff. Yeah. <coughs> then you get tithing and it just locks the whole bag of church. <laughs> <laughs> hey. okay. Listen. When we look at Calvary, nothing is more clear than the absolute truth. Yeah, yeah. There are several undeniable things that I learned at Calvary. Let's look at several of those in this message. Number one. Calvary shows us men are sinners. Yeah. Calvary shows us that men are sinners. You still there in Luke 23? Yes. Look at verse 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there who? They. We're going to look at those days here in a minute. They crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Now, the two malefactors that were being crucified on either side of Jesus that day, y'all realize they weren't the only criminals that right. were there? That's right. They weren't the only guilty ones that were there? That's true. I want you to think about this. Let your mind just go with me for just a moment to the picture of Golgotha. I want you to look there in your mind's eye, I want you to see the three crosses hanging up there. Yes, we see Christ in the middle. And yes, we see one of the malefactors on the right. We see the other on the left. Some rotten, dirty uh, sin that they had done. Some rotten thing they've done against the wall. And we see all these people gathered around. Who were they? They were the religious leaders gathered. How about the leaders of the government? They were all around there. How about the brave soldiers that were around that were walking and taking the folks to be uh, hung on the cross, <clears throat> taking them there. How about the little loving mother that had her children over here watching what was going on? How about all those carefree children that were just running around and, and playing and not really understanding the gravity of the situation? How about all those people that were just looking around and... <clears throat> I want you to understand, back in verse 33 there, I said, the Bible said, there who crucified him? Okay. They. All those people I made mention of are the days they crucified him. He said, oh, well, what did they do? That's the problem. They didn't do anything. Absolutely nothing. With the exception of probably standing there, many of them were probably there when Barabbas standing beside Christ and they said give us Barabbas yeah. give us we want Barabbas so yeah they're the ones that put him on the cross can I say something this morning and it can offend you or you can just understand that it's true <laughs> that person whose teeth you brushed this morning whose hair you combed this morning you're guilty too mm -hmm. Yes, sir. you're one of the days I'm one of the days yes. mm -hmm. that hung him on that cross. Why? Why? Because we're all sinners. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of us. You take the sweetest, most precious little young baby in here, LB over here, chewing on her thumb, trying to get them teeth to come through so she can bite everybody better. <laughs> Y'all know something? She's going to be the Savior. That's right. As sweet as she is. No, she's... It, 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 she, if Jesus was to come back this afternoon, she's good. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. She's good. But there's going to come a day mm -hmm. that she's not going to be. Wow. 
He said, oh, Pastor, that's mean. I'd never say that about a little kid. Why? It's the truth. It's the truth. If you can't handle that simple truth, friend, there's a whole lot in this Bible you can't handle. Because I promise you, your works, just being a sweet little baby, just being this, that, and the other, just being a precious little uh, toddler, and, and, and being being a good uh, person as you get older, does not save you. Right, right, sir. That's right. I have family members of mine that were dedicated to the Lord as babies. Right about LB's age. Brother Reggie, they were dedicated to the Lord. They had their little dedication dresses and all that good stuff. Well, when they were in high school, they did a report. And on their report, they started talking about how much they love God. And the reason they're Christians is because they were baptized and dedicated as an infant. They're hanging their salvation on something they had zero control over. They're hanging their salvation on something mom and dad made them do. Yep. Can I say this this morning? I'm going to you anyway. later. If you ever, 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 and when I say ever, Brother Michael Swope, I mean ever. If you ever try to convince a child that they are saved, mm. you are two steps from wicked yourself. Right. Yes. Amen. 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 Man, oh, yeah. you want to see a preacher get get by the 16 penny nail in half? That's me. Yeah. Why? Because I lived around this garbage of these youth pastors just want to get another notch in their belt and care less how many kids they sent to hell. Wow. All they wanted was to say, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, give them the break. Give them the break. Give them the break. If they pray and it's not in their heart, That's it right. means right. absolutely right. nothing. Why in the world do we see God help us this morning? Why do we see so many kids yeah. leaving the church yeah. whenever they get out of their parents' homes? Mm. Why? Because they never had it in the first place. Yeah. Right. 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 Why didn't they have it? Because mom said, you're saved, you're saved, you're saved. Right. And the kids say, I must be saved. Mama says, I'm okay. I'm going to live like hell the rest of my life because I've got my prior insurance. Oh, Amen, man. preacher. Tell it, yeah. tell it, tell yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Shot from, I don't care who it hurts. Right. Why? Somebody's got to stand up. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank Amen. God. Somebody's got to do it. You're following me, preacher. I'm following me. Yes. Following me, real life. But those are the days. He either orchestrated, they approved, or they voted with their voices. Sure. But all the sinners will be. It was not only the worst of mankind that he had to die for. It was the best. That's the best right. It was the best. Now, how was it real good when I got saved? How was it? I'm not going to say any kind of glory. We ain't going to talk about it. But I know folk, Brother Peter, that were good people. I'm talking give you the shirt off their back. Do anything in the world for you. Stand up for somebody weaker than you. I'm talking good, good men. Good women. Yep. Mrs. Ann helping you say I don't care how well you take care of your family. I don't care how well you take care of somebody else across the street. I don't care how well you take care of your kids or your grandkids. None of that that's commendable. Thank God. Sure. But please show me in the Bible where good people go to heaven. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. it speaks just the opposite. Yeah. Right. It tells us there are none righteous. Yep. Right. No, not right. None righteous. If you see yourself as righteous this morning, I promise you something. You ain't. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Amen. Man. Pastor, you're being awful mean this morning. No, I just love you enough. I want to tell you the truth. Yes, thank God. Amen. I just love you enough. I want you to know the truth. Amen. Like I said, it wasn't the meanest and it wasn't the worst of mankind. We all represented the days mm. in that 
group. You see, from Calvary to each of us are not better. <laughs> when you look at it, <clears throat> when you look at Calvary, you look at it properly. You realize this morning, instead of thinking, well, I'm not as bad as I thought I was. When you look at Calvary, you realize you're actually worse than you yeah, are. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Amen. You always tell when you look at somebody who talks about how good they are and how much they uh, basically deserve salvation. That's the people you look at, Brother Peter, and say, well, I'm really not sure that you got it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Because you know what salvation will actually do for you? Humble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It will humble you to the point because you realize, mm -hmm. I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. I can do it myself. So we understand this morning that we're all sinners. Look with me at Romans chapter number three. Go with me to Romans chapter three. And let me say this this morning. If nobody's ever told you how bad a sinner you are, let me be the first. <laughs> I hope that don't come between us. Right. Because I don't want to become your enemy only because I tell you the truth. But the Bible said I would. Right. Hey, let me say this. If you're realizing this morning that you can't work your way to heaven as we understand, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us you can't. You can't do it by works. It's by grace. <clears throat> right. If you're realizing for the first time this morning, that's okay. Yes, amen. Okay. Don't be upset about it. Amen. And say, you know what? I may not like him, mm -hmm. but what he's telling me is the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. I may not like to hear the mm -hmm. But what I'm telling you is the truth. Mm -hmm. You know how I know it's the truth? Because what the Bible tells me this. Mm -hmm. And number two, you can't prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You've got no proof otherwise. Mm -hmm. Have you ever realized why? And, and thought about this. Why does society stand on stuff? they got zero proof. It's just well, what I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't care about what you feel. Let me tell you about what I know. Yes. And then the, the, what, I, what I read out of this Bible is not based on feelings. Right. It's based on the truth, the absolute truth yep. of God's Word. With me in Romans 3? Yes. Look at me in verse number 10. I want you to see these this morning. I've got three verses to go through. <laughs> Romans chapter 3 and verse number 10. The Bible says, you ready? As it is written. What, where is it written? It's in the Bible. There is none righteous. No, not one. If you just thought that was a song that we sang, bless your heart. But it means no, not one. Not a single person. None in this place. None that you ever come in contact with. None that have ever lived on this earth or that will ever live on the earth beyond today are righteous. No, not one. Look down to verse number 12. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. How many? No, no not, not one. one. Do you see a pattern here? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a pattern right here that the Bible is telling us that none are righteous, that none doeth good, and that's none of us. That means no, not one. Now here's the kicker. Go to verse 23. I want you to understand this. this verse number 23 of Romans 3. The Bible says in verse 23, for who? All. Oh. How many is that? All. Oh. Oh. What does all mean? All oh. means all. Oh. All means all. All means all. That's all all is. All has sin. And do what? Come short. Come short. But I'm trying. I can almost reach it. What did the Bible just tell you? Come short. You're going to come short. You're going to come short. Because all have sin. Sin and come short of the but but preacher, you don't understand. You don't know me. You're right, I don't. That's right. But God does. <coughs> yes, yeah. sir. God does. Yeah. Why? Because He created you. Yeah. He knows exactly what it's going to take to get your attention. He knows exactly what it's going to take to get a hold of your heart. Oh, Listen, let me beg of you this morning. Let the message get a hold of your heart before God has to start ripping things out of your life. 
and yes, sir. Yes, sir. people out of your life before he gets your attention. Amen. He is good enough to you to send some loud mouth yes, son of a yes, yes. to yes. tell you that he loves you. Amen. Don't let him take everything you got. Amen. 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 Yep. Seen it happen to you. Yes, sir. As I'll tell you this evening in the graduation call almost almost happened to me. Yep. Real, 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 real close. He almost took the baby from me. Yep. Our first child. Brother Peter, truth be known, he should have. Mm -hmm. yep. He should have. But it is worse. Mm -hmm. He did. No, I'm begging you this morning. Don't push him to that point. Mm -hmm. He's dealing with your heart. He's got something for you. Mm. He wants something more for your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Than what you can ever imagine. Mm. He wants something for your family. More so, Miss Betty, than any <coughs> of you could ever imagine. Mm. There's no way in the world that I thought growing up being loved the church. Not wanting to be there. Mm. That God could ever use me in any capacity. Mm. Wow. Man, God has allowed me to be a part of stuff. Yep. See stuff. Preaching other countries, leading music in other countries, in tent crusades, and, and, and just things that baffles me that God would use me. He's got the same for you. He does. But you've got to be willing to say, I can't do it myself. Mm -hmm. I can't do it myself. <clears throat> I want Saul did. Billy Graham was making, he used to preach crusades all over, not believe he was a Billy Graham is, but he used to preach crusades all over the country, and especially down in the southeast, down in North Carolina, where he lived. He went to a town somewhere, I'm not sure, with the, the state or anything of that nature. But anyway, he went to the town. He's getting prepared for the revival meetings and the crusades and everything of that nature. Well, he got in touch before he went. He got in touch with the mayor of the town that he was going to. By letter, he sent him a letter, you know, and had the email or text back to him. Mm -hmm. And so he sent him a letter. And uh, the letter was basically saying something to the effect that, uh, listen, I'm coming to town. We'll be preaching gospel messages. If you know of anybody in town that needs help, needs me to pray with them for them, or just needs to be saved, let me know their information. I'd like to be able to reach out to them be able to talk to them and get them to the tent or get them to the crusade boat. So time went by and Brother Graham got the uh, letter back from the mayor. It was a phone book of their city. <laughs> that mayor understood the Bible. Right here. They all have sin. Yeah. Yeah. Short of the glory of God. He understood it. He said, all these people need help. Mm, yes, amen. 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 So we realize this morning that we are all sinners. Every one of us that has ever drew a breath on this earth was born a sinner. Yes, yes sir. That's right. When, we, when it come, we come to Calvary, we can draw no other conclusion than what the Bible tells us. That even the best among us, even the most respected among us, even those who pride themselves on being good People, even believing themselves to be better than others, are all just sinners in need of a Savior. That's right. The Bible says they're the unrighteous. No, not one. So Calvary shows us that we're all sinners. Calvary also shows us that God judges sinners. Yeah. Look way back in our text. <clears throat> in Luke chapter... 23 and verse number 35. <clears throat> verse number 35. The Bible says, And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, but him saved himself, if he be Christ, the chosen one. Now look down in verse number 40. The one looks over and he says, But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? 
is thus thou not fear God being in the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. See, those people were judging him. They were judging him, saying, well, he's who he says he is. Let him get out of this. Why in God fixing this if he's who he says he is? If the Bible be true, then why ain't my life straightened out? If you believe the Bible be true, why ain't your life straightened out? Amen. That's right. Oh, I said it. And I'm in it. Why? Why would you ever say that? Listen. Because if this right here is true in your heart, you're born again. And God will see you through every obstacle that you've got. Amen. Amen. Oh, there may be times when Mike Brown, you look around and think, Lord, where are you? We'll look here in just a minute what Christ said in Matthew. There may be some times, Brother Tom, that life is difficult. And we think, oh my goodness, where are you? Why did you allow this to happen? Why does this come in my life? You know what's a good thing to do when that does happen? Check up and say, Lord, is it me? Yes. Amen. It might just be a Job moment that it's not you. That it's just a... Uh, it's just a refining moment that you'll be able to come forth this goal. Sure. It may be that, but it very well may be something, Brother Reggie, between here. And if it's mm -hmm. here, then things around me aren't going to be right. where they're supposed to be. Jesus said in Matthew 27, 46, at about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Mm -hmm. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? See, there was a moment there that Christ came into the presence of his Father. He said, oh my goodness. He couldn't feel the presence of God. Right? You know why? Yeah. He had my sin on his yeah, back. Yeah, right. He had your sin on his back. He had the sin of the world on him. And his Father could not even look at him. And then we find out in Romans 8.32, the Bible tells us he that spared not his own son, meaning God spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Yes. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Mm. He, he tells us right there, he gave up his own son. For who? For you. For you. You could say, no, he did He did it. You would have been the only one. If done. Uh, but Matt, he did it for you. You said, I wasn't even around. No, oh, but he knew you was there. And he knew you'd be as nasty as you are. Amen. But I'm a good person. How dare you keep calling me nasty? How dare I not? Right. Listen, too many people have been telling you how good you are your whole life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not being honest this morning. I'm not being ugly. But have we not come to a society that tells everything how mm -hmm. good they are? Yeah. We live in a society, and I want you to understand this when I say that this morning. Brother Peter, I'm saying that because we live in a society that calls good evil and evil good. Mm -hmm. And so when they look at you and say, oh, you're a good person, what are they really saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not against being a good person. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not against taking care of others. We do. We try to. We try to serve others and be as pleasant to other people as we can. But understand this. Being good does nothing for your spiritual standing. Right. Yes, sir. Good preacher. I'm not good to be saved. Mm -hmm. I'm good because I am saved. Right. Amen. 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 I ain't really all that good. Let's just be honest. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> understand this one. If he's willing to give his own son. Then why would he why, why would he not give freely to those things that he's promised us? Many people take false comfort in foolishly believing that God is too good to judge a sinner. <clears throat> he judged his own because of my sin. Mm -hmm. He judged his own. Son, so why would he not judge? <clears throat> you know what they're really saying to themselves whenever they say God's too good to judge a sinner? What they really mean is they believe that they are too good for God to judge. Mm. Amen. Well, let me 
always say this, if you honestly look at Calvary, there's no way you can come out of it without coming out of the way with the conclusion that God judges sinners. Right. He spared not his only begotten son, the sinless Lamb of God. He spared him not. What hope is there that any of us could be spared from his judgment? In Revelation chapter 20, I believe it's around verse number 14. I didn't write it down. Just figure I'll share it with you right now. 14 and 15 anyway. They that were not found written in the book of life. Basically he says, if your name is not there, mm -hmm. you're cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Which is the second death. Mm -hmm. 15 is 15. Mm -hmm. 15. So those that were not found. Mm -hmm. You know who those people are that were not found? Those quote? The ones that never accepted him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, well, I know who Jesus is. You talk about him all the time. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's great that you know who he is. Does he know you? Mm -hmm. Does he know you? Matthew 7, 21, 2, 3, right? You know, say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not? Right? Not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils? Have we not done many wonderful things? Mm -hmm. No, I'll confess unto them, depart from me, you work for iniquity, for I never knew mm. That's those that will be cast in the lake of fire in Revelation 2015. You will be judged by holy God for your unholy deeds. Done here on earth. You know the way to escape judgment? Children will judge what you've done after you get saved, right. but you're not going to be held accountable for your sin because it was nailed to the cross. Yes. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. How about it today? Mm -hmm. Let me just get y'all honest with you, okay? There's some things you're holding on to. Yep. There's some things some of us hate <coughs> hanging on to. Sure. It's time to just put those down. Yes. Sir. yes. Okay? I wouldn't steer you wrong for nothing in the mm, world. That's right. Hey, if there was another way mm. to heaven, I'd be the first to tell you. Mm. Mm. Amen. If, if you just went to hell for a thousand years, I'd stop preaching like I did. Mm. If you just went to hell for a thousand years, uh, five thousand, ten thousand, a uh, million years, if there was an opportunity, if there was not eternity in your, in your future, I would stop preaching the way I do. But friend, eternity is forever. Oh, yes. There's no when your heart stops, air fi air fills your lungs for the last time and it's released. It's too late. Yeah. You will be judged by a holy and righteous God. Mm -hmm. Who's he gonna judge? Those that rejected his son. Mm -hmm. That's who's in Revelation 25. <clears throat> they that were cast into the lake of fire. I don't want any of them. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. I don't. I want to see anybody not be forgiven, especially the ones I've been preached to. Mm -hmm. Especially the ones that sit under the sound of my voice. Why? Because I love you. Amen. And Brother Tom Harmon, my love pales in comparison mm -hmm. to the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. These are just a couple of things thus far. That I've learned in Calvary. These are two lessons this morning that if you've never learned, you can't. Amen. Heads bowed out.